All right, we've got a lot that we're going to try and cover here today. And I'm not 100% sure where the best place to start is, so I'm going to start at the beginning. I first started using hooks along these lines for stick worms. Now this is a, a clubo in a 5 inch and a 4 inch that comes out of a mold that my company makes. So if you want to make your own, but that's not the purpose of this video. It's to show you some hook options. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're using a Senko or an Ocho or a Sticko or any other stick worm. Uh, this all applies. Originally I wacky rigged them and I found that the old uh, uh, Reaction Innovations WW hook was probably the best for wacky rigging. But it wasn't quite weedless enough if I wanted to pitch back in the Thule's, so I switched to a Texas rig. And I'll show a video here in a minute uh, with the Texas rig I was using. I was using a Daiichi copperhead hook with a copper keeper screwed into the nose and the, book, the hook point buried into the bottom of the bait. And I found that not only was I able to get out of the Thule's and, and pitch back in the brush uh, a little bit more effectively, but I got more fish per stick worm. If you've ever fished Senkos, you know that a lot of people think of them as a one fish bait. And the first time I took them out and fished them, I caught five fish before the bait came apart and came off the hook and got lost. Now by now I'm sure I've already shown you a still shot of the Daiichi Copperhead, but at one point I wasn't able to get them. I wasn't able to find them. The only ones I found were some knockoffs on uh, Amazon and when I got them they turned out not to be the right hook. So I started looking for options and I found that I could buy these jig hooks which is f functionally what a um, Daiichi Copperhead is. is a, it's, the Daiichi Copperhead is a red dyed or red painted hook with a copper screw lock keeper or a screw lock bait keeper on the eye. And I'll talk about why I mentioned copper in a minute. We'll get a, that's a 5 aught and let's see if we've got a 3 aught here in the box. If not, I'll run out to the shop and get one. Of course, if you just want to buy a hook and use it, there's absolutely nothing wrong with a Daiichi Copperhead hook. And the guys over at TTI Blakemore, they're the parent company, have always treated me really well. So absolutely, there's nothing wrong with using that hook. Out of the package, it functionally does what this does. Now they sell these little hitchhikers separately, and you can get them in packs of a few or packs of several. This is a pack of several, 20 count. And I have another pack here that was like a 6 count because that's all I could get at the time. Um, and they sell two sizes. I don't know what the exact part numbers are. And if this doesn't show up well in the video, I'll make a little um, still photo and insert it right now to show you the difference here. Let's see if we can get one of those separated out because that's all we need to show you. All right. Oh, and the, by the way, the, the Eagle Claw L730 is not the only hook that will work. I happen to like the uh, Must Add 32824 because it's a little heavier wire hook. Uh, I think it costs marginally more than the Eagle Claw, but if you just want the cheapest hook that'll do the job, that's probably it. And it's real simple. This is a smaller one. Just snap it on the eye of the hook. That's ready to fish. Well, ready to use. And we'll take the bigger hook and the bigger screw lock. There we go. Um, this is basically all that I did, is I just push them on here and screw the bait on. And then I would I'd take a little bit of care at this point. I would see where it lays out, where it goes in, and then I would kind of just try and push it in so that it lays natural and the point, I can feel the point of the hook, but it doesn't quite stick me. That worked really well for me. Uh, I fish these typically on braid or fluorocarbon, and I hit them on the hook set really hard, and that works great. I get a lot of great hookups. Good, good ratio for a Texas rig. 
probably wouldn't work if you like to fish them on a wimpy rod. With the smaller one, the smaller hook, the smaller screw lock, same thing. Do the same thing as far as figuring out where I want it. I can feel the point, but it doesn't quite stick me. And a little trick to put, tie on these hooks on your line, is rig a bait on them first, then you don't get the line all tangled up in the uh, screw lock part. Makes it a lot easier. Then you can put your line through and tie your palomar or your triline. I wouldn't tie a triline knot with braid or whatever line, whatever knot you like with the line you're using. Now the reason I like the copper keepers, let me get out another one here. And you don't have to use these. You can use that. You can buy a lot cheaper. You can buy st stainless steel ones but they stretch. Let's see if we can get a good view up close. They stretch a little bit. They, the stainless steel ones don't stretch at all. So when you set the hook you tear out the nose of the bait and then you're back to being a one fish bait or biting off the nose and fishing it shorter and if they don't like it shorter then you're out of luck. But that works and that's why I like the copper keepers. There are other options. Like I said you can buy steel keepers uh, and some people like the owner style keepers. Um, they call them uh, center pin twist locks or something like that. And if you look really closely here, you can see that there's a little wire that sticks out through the center of the uh, screw lock. And the reason some people like these is it makes it really easy. Let's try and find a bait that's an appropriate size. Well, this one will work. I have more of these in the box. Makes it real easy to start the screw lock exactly where you want it because you push the center pin in and then you just turn and the center pin just guides it right in. All right. That might that hook might be a little small for that bait, but but it shows you the point. <laughs> Literally. Ha ha, I made a funny. So that makes a great um, hook for what you want. This is basically the way I rig and fish the, the, the little club. These are called a clubbo, in case I didn't mention that. That's basically the way I rig and fish those 99% of the time now. Is uh, Texas rigged on a 60 degree round bend jig hook with a copper screw lock or copper bait keeper. Set those aside for the moment. Oh, they make a version. Daiichi makes a version of their um, copper head hook called a butt dragger, and it's got a lead weight on it. And that's something else we're going to touch on this video. If you've got a bait like this, you know, there aren't a whole lot of options if you want to fish it on a swim bait hook. You need some, because of the depth of the bait and the thickness of the bait, there's just no way you're going to get good hookups unless you've got something that's extra deep to do the job. And uh, as far as I know, the only hook out there that's this deep is the owner beast hook. Fortunately, they make it. Um, and it's an option. It has the center pin screw lock. has a heavy weight. It's extra, extra, extra wide gap. And it's a good hook for the application. But in my opinion, it's probably the only application that that hook is ideal for. Uh, is a deep, wide swim bait like that. This swim bait was made by Predator Bait Company, and I think Sean Bailey still owns the company, but I don't know if he's still making baits or not. You'd have to ask him. I started fishing. Well, let's just look at, at some other, uh, other problems. This is a little swim bait. I love this little swim bait. It catches fish. And when all you got's a bunch of dinks out there, they'll hit this and they'll eat it and you can have some fun catching fish. Not that you can't catch big fish on it, because the first time I ever fished one, I caught a five pounder on one of these. But it's really hard to find a weighted swim bait hook that will fit this swim bait. You can find a ball jig or something else, but there's nothing quite as weedless for fishing through the grass and, and <coughs> excuse me, 
winding it out through between pencil toolies than a proper swim bait hook. And we'll get to that in a minute. This little tiny buzz frog, same problem. I couldn't find a hook that was suitable to fish that. Um, this is this is fished on top, so weightless, and it, it was an issue. But I did find a little wide gap jig hook that was just the right size. Well, let's uh, see if I've got it here. I got a whole box of stuff, and I'm not sure that I got everything out that I wanted. Let's see, those are the L730s. I thought I grabbed them. Oh, there it is. This is the 91768 in one aught. We'll mention that in a minute. But we're also going to start with my very first 91768. And this was all about saving money. I could buy these in 50 packs from any one of a number of uh, uh, tackle maker uh, suppliers. Or 100 packs or 1,000 packs. You can get them from Do It. You can get them from Barlow's. You can get them from Captain Hooks. You can probably get them from Lurecraft. I'm sure there's a lot of people that, that stock those. Uh, and basically what I did was I used this, like this, a little copper keeper. Let's grab another one out. Actually, a big copper keeper. Let's just dump them all out because I'm going to probably wind up using a bunch of them. And it turned out to be just about perfect for this buzz frog. Right, screw it in there, rig it up. The hook lays right there in that little. Oh, this is called the curly buzz frog regular size or standard size. This is called the curly buzz frog mini. I make the molds for those too. But that's not what this is about. And you just screw it in where you want it. And yes, I realize that it's not as easy to get it exactly where you want it as the owner center pin, but it still has the same benefits that it has with the clubos. And that is that it stretches a little bit, so you don't necessarily blow out the nose of the bait and have to get a new one after just one fish. Right, there we go. Get the right location, lay it up there, and you could you could tuck the point if you like. You can just lay it up there if you like. It really depends on where, where you're fishing it, but that frog is ready to go. And while we're here, I'm gonna touch on something. On this particular frog, the bigger one, I get a lot of short strikers that grab the legs of the of the frog, and uh, I've even seen them in clear water. Seen a frog uh, disappear, look down in the water, see a bass swimming away, and he's carrying it like this. Now, if you know that's what's happening, you can just give him slack and wait until he gulps it in, and then set the hook. If you're not fishing stained water, if you're further away from the boat, if you can't see the fish, obviously you can't do that. All you know is when you when you start to pull up on pull up your slack, you feel pressure. You set the hook, and he's gone. Um, I found with two pound fish and smaller that happens a lot. With bigger fish, uh, I'd say anything over two pounds, typically they hit it right here, and they get the hook. The, the the fish or they get the uh, frog in their mouth and when you set the hook you got them you know you just got got to give them a minute to turn back down and hit them again I hit them pretty hard with that I fish that on braided line but every once in a while you know you get those those days when you get a bunch of two pounders short striking you and I'm sure most of you guys are familiar with using a trailer hook on a spinner bait or even a buzz bait where you take a hook with a large eyelet and you put something on it to hold it in place and you put it down over the hook so it trails behind it. The thing is is you're typically fishing one of these in grass, sometimes in tulies, sometimes pitching it up under tulies and overhangs and that's not very weedless. So I discovered this hook right here it's got a large round bend. It's not sold as a trailer hook. I think it's sold for shiner fishing. 
but it's got a large eye on it and it's got a a wire weed guard now nothing is perfectly weedless but that's a lot more weedless than a regular open trailer hook and you just take a piece of aquarium tubing this is old used aquarium tubings but it doesn't really matter and you just cut off a, sh a very short chunk and the, the reason for this is to hold the hook in place All right. Let's take that out of there. I like to leave it point up, but point down would probably work as well. Now this is pretty tough, so be careful not to stab yourself. All right, we can push that down out of the way. That aquarium tubing has a little bit of a grip on the shank of this hook, so it generally stays where you put it. Obviously, if you hit something with it, it'll move. And you've got a trailer hook that now hangs back. Oh, let's. You've got a trailer hook that now hangs back between those kicking legs. And I found when I fished the trailer hook, as I mentioned a minute ago, I typically caught two pound and smaller on the trailer hook, and most all of the bigger fish were caught on the front hook. Now you might notice there's some swim baits here on deck, and I haven't really talked about them. But uh, I'm going to show you the, the, the uh, hook on the uh, mini buzz frog also here in a second. Let's see here. I had to go all the way down to a one aught hook, but it's still the same wide gap inline hook like the big one I use on the big buzz frog. It's just the right size for this frog. And let's go ahead and just dump out the smaller copper keepers. Snap one on the nine on the Mustad nine one seven six eight. And I'm sure there are other uh, jig hooks. This is a thirty degree extra wide gap, or maybe just be a wide gap, thirty degree wide gap jig hook. And I'm sure there are others out there that will work. This just happens to be the one I use, plus Mustad has always treated me good. Actually, Eagle Claws treated me good, too. Um, owner is okay. Uh, hate to say it, but Gamagatsu told me to pound sand uh, whenever I asked him about anything. Well, I shouldn't say Gamagatsu did. One regional or local sales rep basically told me to pound sand. But uh, if you like Damagatsu, I'm sure they have a hook that will do the job. That's uh, a small bait, so getting the screw lock started in just the right hook might be a little tricky. And if you and if owner makes a a, 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 a twist lock hook small enough that prepackaged, they might have one that you could use. All right, but this is basically the same setup. Uh, let's get that just right. Is that right? Uh, I think I got it 180 out. There we go. Basically the same setup. See where the hook is going to go. Run it up. Run it through there. There is a little bit of a of a hook slot on the top up here too. A bigger hook slot on the bottom. Um, and just gently, I, on this one, the smaller one, I gently, usually gently tuck the point. And now we're all set. And I couldn't find a quote-unquote frog hook for this frog. Of course, I made that frog, so that's not surprising. But I was able to find a hook that I could buy and the copper keepers and make a hook. And that's cheaper than buying packaged frog hooks. Uh, I saw some in the store the other day. I snapped a picture, so I'll think I'll, I'll I'll try and clip it on here. It was like four bucks for three hooks, and I just sort of scratched my head and said, you know, that's not even a special hook. You know, this one's a special hook. I can't buy just this hook, as far as I know. So you got to pay their price. But it was basically just a hook with a screw lock snapped onto it. 
Now we're going to get to swim baits. And we've got a variety of swim baits to deal with. Guess what? This hook works really well. This is called a quick and dirty swim bait uh, or QD 275. It's two and three quarters inches long. And that one knot uh, must add 91768 hook looks like it's about the right length for it. Maybe even a number one would be a good length, but I'd have to look and see if they make one. Now, the hook isn't ready. And the reason it isn't ready is because if you rig this up and fish it, that bait's going to surface and lay over on its side and it's not going to swim like a swim bait. Uh, and so you want a weighted hook. And here's a, a larger version. This one's actually caught a lot of fish and it's bent out. Uh, I don't even know who made that hook. But it's a weighted swim bait hook. And it's got a little stainless steel screw lock on it. You can buy them like that. But I couldn't find one a good size for this bait. I just couldn't find one. So I started playing around and looking around and I discovered these. They're not cheap. Uh, you might be able to find something else that serves the same purpose. This is 10 weights for 3 eighths of an ounce and you see here in their picture they uh, show that the, the weight is crimped onto a hook. Little slot in it. We'll get those out in a minute. These are uh, eight weights for four bucks. These are ten weights for four bucks. And they, I don't know if they still make them, but they, they came from Bass Pro Shops. Actually, these came from a lack, local tackle store, so the price is likely higher because it's been a long time since Bass Pro Shops sold to local tackle stores. Anyway, uh, I think these are 16th ounce and these are 8th ounce. And if we want to uh, turn that hook into a weighted swim bait hook, all we have to do is take one of these. Not always quite as easy as it sounds. And crimp it onto that hook and then we have a weighted swim bait hook. Now you can just use an ordinary pair of pliers if you like. You know pair of needle nose and just smash the heck out of it. Uh, this particular size, this one in the 16th ounce that I found that the uh, arrow stop for a bowstring, the tool for crimping those on, is just the right size for these. But I don't have one. So we're going to try some different things. That looks like it's too big. This is a um, crimp tool for coax. Obviously we could just smash it with the needle nose. This is a, uh, a wire stripper and crimper for electrical wire and electrical t terminals. So let's try this front crimp right here and see how that works. Oh, maybe not as good as I hoped. It's twisting out a little bit, so that might not be the best tool. Although it's on there and it's solid, well, it's not moving much. It just looks nasty see if we can get that off and try another one. Well, before we go any further, let's make it clear that that is a perfectly functional weighted swim bait hook. It's just ugly as sin. All right? So finding the right tool to crimp that on. I don't know where my arrow stop or my bowstring stop tool went. Might be in one in my boat. But let's see what we can find that might work better. Let's grip, dig out another one of those weights. Anyway, as we mentioned, it's, well, for the bigger size, it's four bucks for about, let's see, eight half ounces, so four ounces of lead, which is not a great deal for price of lead, but it is what it is. I mean, it's, it's functionally usable. Well, that one's messed up. Well, let's get out another one. <laughs> all right, there we go. That one goes on nice. It's not all messed up. 
let's see what we let's just try crimping it with the needle nose. Actually, that's not bad. And now we have a little weighted swim bait hook. that is just the perfect size for these little swim baits. I'm not saying that this is the best way or the only way to fish these swim baits. I'm just saying if you want to fish them on a swim bait hook and you can't find one, this is an option. You can just make your own. And you can make them in a variety of weights. I actually thought about making a mold for hook weights so that people could, you know, pour their own weights, but uh, that works. You can leave it untucked for open water fishing or just over the grass. You can give it a very slight tuck if you're going to chunk it back in the in the grass, in the tulees, chunk it under overhangs, etc. Make it a little more weedless. And you're set. You have got a swim bait hook that will fish that swim bait like a swim bait. You can do the similar thing with the larger ones um, if you want to, although finding swim bait hooks for the uh, larger ones is a little bit easier. Uh, you can make, your, make up your own hooks like this, either weighted or, not, or unweighted for soft jerk baits. This is um, a square back minnow. I made the mold for this, I don't know, ages ago, 12, 15 years ago. I have never made it up for resale, but if somebody's interested, let me know and I'll uh, see what I'd have to sell them for. This has got a similar body to the frog, but it's a swim bait. It's got a little swim bait tail. Kicks great in the water. This is called a PF2 swim bait. And the reason I call it a PF2 swim bait is because the original PF swim bait was a turd. It didn't kick worth a darn. I had to redesign it. Anyway, I made those in three sizes. And again, I ran into an issue. The, the, the goal of these was to have a great big profile, like a bait like this. So a fish that was looking for a big bite would see a big bite. But if you looked at, but it wouldn't require a beast hook in order to be able to hook fish. It's a little bit thinner in this profile. Um, but that, again, that's not what this is about. This is about setting up a hook for it. And I found that a half ounce hook worked great on this. I could fish it decently, a foot or two down or near the surface. Um, I found that with the smaller ones, they also needed more weight, but there wasn't hooks that would work for them that were heavy enough. And that's why I got these, 3 8 and half ounce uh, swim bait weights. I tried one of these with a quarter ounce number four beast hook and I could swim it on the surface, which is a great option sometimes, but I could barely move it at all to, if I wanted to try and keep it subsurface with, with their quarter ounce weight. So, I got these big old half ounce crimp on weights. And let's see here. Give me just a minute. I'll be right back. I need to go get some more hooks. I think the 91768 hooks will be good for these two. Again, I'm sure other hooks would also work just as well. But let me go grab a selection of those hooks because I have them in different sizes. And like I said, you can order them from a number of different places if you decide that you want to try them. But I'll be right back. All right, I'm back with an assortment of hooks. I've got them from the one aught that I already showed you, two aught, three aught. Um, thought I had some four aught. Yeah, these are oh, those are seven aught. Those are nine aught. Those are eight aught. So we have a variety of sizes. Well, let's just uh, grab ourselves a screw lock and let's look and see if a three aught is about the right size for that. That might be a hair big, or it might be just right. Let's try it. If, we, if you don't like it, you can always use a different size. Snap a screw lock on it. 
grab that big old half ounce weight and we'll grab this coax crimper that I brought just for this. Looks like it might, that weight might be a little much for that hook, but there we go. And we'll just crimp it on there. And there's a lot of different tools I'm sure you can use for this. Like I said, on that one I just crimped it on with needle nose and it worked just fine. And now we have a half ounce weighted swim bait hook in just the right size for this bait. Well, let's make sure. Get it screwed in there. That hook is sticky sharp. I can't believe I've had people tell me that they don't think must add hooks are sharp. They sure are for me. Put it right through there. And now that's got a half ounce weight. We got a hook that's about the right length for the body. We could probably bump up to a four rod if you want a little bit more gap. Uh, you've got enough room here for the hook set. See? Oh, I'm doing a lot of stuff off camera, aren't I? You got enough room here for the hook set. Hook that puppy up. You're all set. You want to fish this big one here. Same bait, just a bigger size. Uh, I think I call these the, the large, the standard, and the small. I might, call, I might call that one the mini, but it's not all that mini. Let's take a look here. I think a 9 aught hook is probably a little much for that. see what this 8 dot 91768 hooks looks like for length on that. Um, actually the 9 aught might be good for it. I know that the 10 aught beast hook isn't too big for it. I just don't like the price of the beast hook. Um, oh, here's the 9 aught. Yeah, the 9 aught looks good. And again, because of the width of the body, we want it to fish deep. We're going to dig out one of those big half ounce swim bait hooks. And put it on here. All right. Give it a crimp. Actually, you know what? Let's do this one with the needle nose just to see. Let's make sure it's pushed on there as far as we can push it on. No, the needle nose might not be quite enough plier for the job. go. Now we've got a 9 aught weighted hook. As soon as we snap, this is a big heavy hook so be careful with these keepers not to destroy the snap part. Maybe even push it back together a little bit when you put it on. Now we have a weighted screw lock swim bait hook that should be just right for this much bigger swim bait. And there are a lot of swim bait hook options out there, and for a bait this size, I'm sure you can find one already made up that would work. But what I'm showing you is that if there isn't a hook that's just right for your bait, you can make one up. That, lay that up there, tuck the point slightly, or not, it's all ready to go. Tie that on your line and fish it. Actually, I think I... Got that hook a little far back. There we go. Tie that on your line and go fishing. I hope that... Oh! One more thing. The little trick that I showed you 
right here. Or if you're getting a lot of short two pounders short striking it and grabbing the legs, you could get two pounders short striking this or this or this in between size one and also just grabbing the tail swimming away. If you want, I'm not sure that, that I think it's as good of an idea with this type of bait, but if you want you could certainly rig one up just like this and you wouldn't necessarily have to worry too much about it interfering with the with the action of the tail, but it could. So what you could do is just every time that you cast it out make sure it's down a little bit so that it can't interfere with the action of the tail and this little piece of aquarium tubing right here will pretty much hold it wherever you put it until it gets worn out don't be afraid to re tear it off or cut it off and replace it and or until you hit something with it and even then it's more likely to swing off to one side than necessarily slide up on the hook and as long as you're fishing this on a fast rod uh, with enough backbone in it even if it gets pushed up against here and your fish bites here, it's still going to push down and allow you to get the hook set if you hammer them. I've probably talked for way too long for this video, but I hope you guys got some ideas about different things you can do. Uh, just by taking hardware that's out there and trying it out, and there they are and using existing hooks for a little different purpose than they were originally intended all of these hooks were intended as jig hooks but they make fantastic swim bait and jerk bait and uh, hard bait hooks Here, let's go ahead and put make one up for one of these what do, what, what do you think uh, and you can do whichever you like believe it or not I actually like a hook like this better for these but I've got a fishing buddy who much prefers a hook like this. Matter of fact, he outfished me using this bait the last time we fished together. Uh, there's a 3 aught. That would probably work. Let's see here. 2 aught, 3 aught, 5 aught. Let's take a look at the 5 aught and see. The nice thing about this is, is that you don't necessarily have to make up a bunch of hooks in every size. You just figure out which hook will be best for what you want to do. And you make up some in that size. And if you're not sure what hooks are available, go online. Mustad and Owner and, uh, and um, Eagle Claw have most of their hooks uh, available to, to see right on their website and like I said you can order them a number of different places Barlow's is a good choice do it is a good choice if you're gonna buy a bunch of them Captain Hooks is a good choice if you're a reseller you certainly might want to check out Shorty's Hooks there are resellers only uh, uh, front for uh, Captain Hooks or Captain Hooks is a, is a retail front for Shorty's depending on how you want to look at it but there are a lot of ways to, to rig these baits and it doesn't have to cost a lot of money. When you buy these hooks, 50, these are 50 counts, 50 at a time, or 100 at a time, or 1,000 at a time, um, they're not outrageously expensive. You're not going to be paying four, five, six bucks a hook. Uh, most of the, I think all of these hooks are less than a buck a piece. I think they're a lot less than a buck a piece. I'm thinking I've, if, I, if I had to spend 50 bucks for that box, I probably wouldn't have bought it. Uh, and the weights are modestly expensive. The the are the um, the little um, hitchhikers are a few dollars for a bag, depending on the size bag and the size hitchhiker. I'd say probably if you buy the Bass Pro Shops weights, they're the most expensive part if they still make them. If they don't make them, let and you want some, let me know. I guess I could make a mold for them. Anyway, that's it, guys. I hope you learned something. If nothing else, well, I got to talk for 10 minutes. <laughs>